particularly what I'm going to talk about is what I'm most interested in, and that is actually how can someone actually make some money out of all of this stuff? You know, that's, that's, what, that's what really drives me. I'm interested in how do we use this technology to actually inform a decision that's, that someone's, and provide a product that someone is actually going to want to pay for. You know, that's what really drives me. And, that, and, and decision support is one way that we can do, do that. And that's what I'm going to just uh, quickly uh, have a bit of a chat about. In being able to understand what decision support is, we need to start with um, understanding, giving it a bit of a definition. And a lot of this, everything today that we've actually talked about, I'd suggest, is always has generally focused on the system. And, and, and quite often we ignore the context in what the system operates in, and that's what I'm interested in. If we don't understand the context, we are now, you won't be able to develop an application that people are actually going to be willing to hand over their hard-earned cash for. So starts with understanding that decision support, in my definition, it's really about the provision of information in a way that is actually relevant. And in, this con and in the context of what this audience is, it's about farm decision making, but it could be about any kind of decision. So um, now there's lots of different applications to this and, and, and mobile applications is just one. But you have to understand the type of information, the type of decisions that you're making and then you choose what your delivery method may be. And mobile applications may not be the necessarily the best, but you need to have a really clear understanding about where that fits in the marketplace and, and who your audience is. To be able to start with that, we have to understand the context and how this stuff works, okay? What is the context of how this information gets used and how people actually utilise these systems? Well, we've got to start with the farmer, okay? Now, He's the user. In the case, the farmer is the decision maker, okay? But it might not necessarily be the case, but we'll say he's a farmer. Now, before I move on, I just want to um, read from a book that is just, if every single person in the room needs to read this book, it's called Crossing the Chasm, right? By Jeffrey Moore. It is about how to market high-tech applications. And I, I can recognise a few mistakes that people have been making, in particular with the farmer audience. The farmer audience is a late majority audience. They are conservatives. Now, normally when we talk about, you know, visionaries, early majorities, late majorities, the late majority would be a third of the marketplace, right? If you've got 10,000 people out there who want to buy it, who potentially could buy you up, 3,000 being a late majority. Not in farming, I suggest. Farming late majority is 70% of the audience, okay? Right, because they're conservative people, they operate in high risk situations, they've been burnt a thousand and one times on crappy applications that haven't delivered, lot, delivered lots of promise but no, but, but no actual reward. And they're conservative. Think about this. Conservatives, in essence, are against discontinuous innovations. They believe far more in tradition than in progress. Conservatives do not have high aspirations about their high-tech investments and hence will not support high price margins. Nonetheless, through sheer volume, they can actually offer great rewards. But most importantly, in the context of what we've been talking about today, conservatives like to buy pre-assembled packages, everything bundled at a heavily discounted price. You don't want to provide the farmer with your application. You want to provide the farmer with the application and the iPad, and the data, and the ISP subscription, and the support, everything together in a single bundle at a single price. If you're not going to do that, the farmer majority in the market will not purchase your product. And we've seen it time and time again where people buy single applications and they fail. They are not commercially viable. So you have to really think about that when you're actually making your application. You have to have complete whole packages because the farm market is a conservative market and you need to target your application. You'll get early wins with visionaries, tech heads and geeks, but once you extend them out, you'll find nothing and you really need to cross the chasm towards these things. So must read book, it's excellent. But back to our farmer. Let's say he's a capsicum farmer. All right, so when we're providing decision support, Mr. Capsicum Farmer, he's got to make some, he's, he's trying to make a living, right? He's trying to build a livelihood from building capsicums, which means he's trying to earn 
some money. You know, he's trying to earn some money so he can put food on the table, using his soil, using his water, all of that type of thing. In this case, he needs, he needs to earn the money. And that's what he's really trying to do. The, his need to be able to put food on the table, go on a holidays, live a happy life, makes him need to do stuff, right? Earn money in this situation. His need to earn money then needs to, the, he needs to drive, that drives a decision-making process, you know? How am I going to do this? When am I going to plant my crop? How am I going to manage my disease? You know, these type of things. From decisions, then you'll actually get from the decisions, you'll get actions. You know, you actually, after you make a decision, you're actually then going to go out and drive the tractor and take action. And then those actions are going to come back and, and build on the livelihood process. And, and hopefully he'll be able to earn some money. This together is the, the decisional process. And you need to really understand in your client, in your target audience, exactly what's going on here in regards to the specific issue. This is what I call a farmer operating environment. You need to understand this. This is the context of which your application and your information is being used. If you don't understand that, you will not produce a useful tool. I guarantee it. You just, you'll spat a gun about and it, and it won't work. And we've seen many, many examples of government-sponsored tools that have had this spat a gun approach and have failed in a commercial or adoption sense. So here's us, you, as the provider. What's your job? Well, essentially, your job, if you want to be able to capture value and have provide value that pay, someone's going to pay for, you need to source information from that operating environment, process it, and provide it in a way that is actually useful for a decision being made. If you can do that with your service offer, you will have a commercially, uh, you'll have every opportunity of producing a, a, a commercially viable product you know, and having some success and getting people to use it. I have not seen a single example in the history of agricultural development in my six years of working in this space where I believe that a company has satisfactorily achieved that. Right? Not one example. The technology adoption is poor in farming not because of the farmer, but because of poor technology development. That's the outcomes of my, the work that I've done. This stuff, do you provide decision support? This picture is the version of that and it's in the guideline that we've produced that describes uh, all these presentations up the front. But in order to be able to provide decision support and be able to operate in this context, you have to tick off on three questions and answer successfully in, before you actually put a piece of code or, or, or a wireframe together or anything like that. Do you actually provide information? You know, do you have some data that's floating around, okay? That you say, Dee, this could be actually pretty useful to somebody. That's the first step. The second step is, if you want to be able to capture value and relevance, that information should be sourced from that farmer operating environment, okay? And because that's really, that's what's really going to turn a, a late majority, a conservative person on this. You're going to be able to tell them something about their world that they wouldn't have been able to know otherwise without your service offer. The last one is that the information that you provide back actually needs to be relevant to a decision they're really making, okay? So providing them information on, like, providing them a bike riding application when they never ride their bike is not really going to be any value and no one's going to pay for it. But, so if it's really relevant to a decision that they're actually making, then you'll have some success. Now we come to this idea about having whole products. And just having the system and the application alone is not going to be enough. You have to understand the products and the services that make your package a whole and attractive. And, uh, whole and attractive. So the systems are the things that we've been talking today. It's the application, it's the data, it's the stuff that actually does the analysis, that type of thing. But in terms of users and people, applications and systems are not enough. It needs to be complemented with products, which are the help menus, the help, the documentation, the YouTube videos, stuff where people can go and learn about what you do, what your system is, how to utilise your information and um, be able to utilise your, your data in a way that can be useful in the decision making. Finally, are the service. You actually have to have good people providing good advice. Right? You have to have good people who are doing the programming. We mentioned, mentioned before about um, 
uh, the gentleman from Outware suggested that you know doing the design on the application is really, really important, and that's absolutely right. You've got to have good people with good skills providing and assisting and supporting your actual application so that when people ring up or uh, need some help, someone is there on the end of the phone and being able to provide those, uh, all of those things in a complete service. So when you're running a service offer and you want to build something and you want to be able to provide this decision support, you have to tick off on, all four, thi on, on four things for each system and product and service in your complete whole service package. And really important that you think about what, you know, what these things are, what makes up your service package. But the four things to think about are usability, usefulness, accessibility and quality okay so your system your system and your service right it needs to be usable okay if you're producing an iPhone app the actual buying the service will be buying the app will be pretty good because you'll be able to uh, the service the, the, the iPhone uh, purchasing system is pretty usable it's pretty good um, but your app needs to be usable farmer needs to be able to get what he can when he wants it it needs to be useful. The information that he provides actually needs to be useful for his decision making. It needs to be accessible so he can find the info when he wants it, okay? And it needs to be of good quality because when it comes to this type of stuff, you, get, you put crap in, you get crap out. So the information that you put into the system needs to be of high quality to be able to do this. Now this actually breaks down into 27 individual methods, individual criteria that you need to tick off on for each system, product and service to create, create a whole system. If you fail on one of these things, your service will fail. And I can go, we see it many, many times. There are hundreds of case studies where you have really high quality data put into an un, to a, use, a system that's not usable and it will fail. It will not see commercial viability or success. So in summary, when you're thinking about, if you want to capture commercial viability and make some money out of this stuff, this is what you have to think about. You have to provide information about the circumstances relevant to a farm decision. You have to make sure that your offer is providing information that is sourced from the client operating environment and relevant to a decision that is actually being made. And for each system, product and service that makes your whole package, they all need to be usable, useful, accessible and of good information quality. Fail on any of these areas and your service will not be commercially viable. I, have abs I can't repeat that enough. You have to do them all. Um, and it's hard work and it's expensive um, and it takes time to develop this skill and capability. But if you want to be able to attract and hit stuff home to a market, to that market, then that's the way you want to do it. I I'll just leave you with this thought. Is there a household name in agricultural software? Yeah, I have never heard, I don't know who Pagata is. Right. Might be names in certain industries, but there's no, here's a household name in agriculture, John Deere. Right. Why isn't there a agricultural software thing like John Deere? And it's because we don't tick off on these things and so the systems aren't there. So I look forward in 10 years, one of you guys actually becoming uh, a household name in agricultural software. And if you do these things, I reckon you'll have a pretty good chance at it. All this information is available in a little fact sheet that I've put together, our project has put together. It's up the front here. Thank you.